The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the January 19th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what the bulls and bears, what these buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. It just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started. A wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show, a mixed bag out here. The Dow up 60, the S&P up 16, the NASDAQ 92. The Russell's down 6, the semis are off 40, the trainees are down 18. New York Stock Exchange up 36. You've got gold up $29. She's trading out at 18.41. Silver's up 72 pence cents, trading out at 24.21. Lights recruit up a buck 62. Negated is TD9 count from yesterday. That says strong momentum move to the upside. Natural gas pulling back a bit. Leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside, you've got Google, 30 Eight bucks. Shopify, 28. Booking Holdings, 24. Palo Alto Networks, 21. That's 4% there. Intuit is up 18 bucks, 3.5%. To the downside, LAM Research, 21 bucks, 3%. Tesla's off 15, 1.5%. SVB Financial, 2% or 13 bucks. Clearfield Inc. up 9 bucks or 14%. And Shockwave is down 5% or 8 buck roonies. But we've got a, our first caller, and it is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. Thank you for taking the call. My pleasure. Is it uh, gold, the metal, or Barrett gold that we're going to take a look at? It's Barrett gold, but if you don't mind, I'd like to just follow up on our conversation we had on uh, Friday. I didn't really have a chance to call yesterday. Sure. But um, I called you that morning, and you know, we talked about the well, the Nasdaq, but I just do the triple Qs. Yes. Using the uh, the options, you know, again, it was on a Friday, and so the. Yeah, you've got that day left, and so the premium is pretty much out of them. And I, I had a, a good trade right out of the gate. You know, in yes. the morning, that one ran up to, you know, about 380. I think when I bought in, it was about 375, and and I had a 100% gain on that one. I was pretty much thought I was done for the day. I went out, took care of some errands, did my hike. You know, some things I do. Yes. During the first part of the day, and then came back and. uh Matter of fact, you had your show going. It was probably around 1030. I saw the NASDAQ back down again, you know, over 100 points. And, yes. And I uh, was able to pick up those ones, you know, because half the day now was gone. So those were even cheaper. Right. And right. those ones ended up being a 300% gain to the upside. And so, yeah, there were some good uh, some good trades that day. You know, there was some good back cool. and forth, some good volatility, which is always nice on a Friday. Yes, yes. Oh, that's great. Great, great, great. Perfect, perfect. Um Anything that I can help you with there, as long as you're talking about the NQs or anything, or should we just go straight on to Barrett Gold? Yeah, I just wanted to talk to you because we had you know, had that conversation that morning, and I'm sure you could have done some trades back the other way, too. I didn't do anything on the put side. Right. I just was doing the calls. 
Um, yeah, we definitely you know, have a two-way. We definitely have a two-way market, so it just depends on the time frames, you know, that you're trading. Um, you know, even today, even last night, you know, yesterday was nice because we had that one day rate of change above plus 10 percent in that spot volatility index. And we know that that usually gives us a nice trade setup. And in fact, it did. And the trade tried setting up when the uh, markets in Asia opened last night and then it gave it up. And I kind of suspected that we'd have to wait until. Uh, Europe open, and that's really when the bottom came in in the market around three three thirty uh, this morning. So uh, you you might have been up at that time for all I know. That's just midnight yeah. <laughs> for, for you out there. Yeah. Uh, so I actually had, had set my alarm to get up at three o'clock to come down and take a look at what was going on. So uh, in any event, it's it, uh, it, so we had that nice one day rate of change. The question is, is today a, just a bounce or is it a bottom out there? And during the show, we'll try to figure that out. Yeah, so on a GOLD, uh, that's Bear Gold is what I am uh, yes. calling about. And I just, I think it might have already uh, uh, took out that swing point. It's, it's going to deal with volume. I think it started to exceed it at near or whatever, 10 o'clock. And, and, uh, but uh, I do think it's actually already is, is completed the one to one. There's a couple of little ABCs in there, but off that. Exactly. Uh, it just There's depends on which love. A to B equals yeah. CD pattern you want to use. That's that's really the the issue out here. So this is probably the one that you're thinking of that just completed. So I've got two of them. It's actually more than completed. Um, uh, if I take a look at the small one, the larger one, um, you know, still has a little bit of a ways to go to get up to 2049. But you're definitely taking out that swing point with mucho grande volume. You're already at 23 million shares, and the swing point. If I use the higher swing point, it's got 23 million. I'm sorry, it had 11 million shares out there, and another swing point had uh, 20 million. So, yeah, you've got, you know, nice confirmed A to B equals CD patterns to the upside. Um, as far as where its next price target is, uh, you know, the again, the larger A to B equals CD would take us to 2049. Chances are because price is moving along the inside path. Let me Let me try to get rid of these patterns out here and put up the A to B equals CD that I really believe is in place out here. And that's this one. So now we see the one-to-one -one target gets you to 2049. But and I'm just going to expand out the daily time frame. The way you come off of a C point really helps us to understand uh, whether this is likely to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. And this is an explosive move off of what I would use as the C point out here. And one of the reasons I would use that as a, yesterday's low as a C point was because price had pulled back and it stayed above the top of that daily profile out there. So. You've got a strong move off of the off of the uh, C area out there. You're really inside the uh, left side of that C to D leg itself. So this says that what we really should see Bear Gold do is more than a one to one A to B equals C D. The 1.272 expansion level gets us to 2104. 2174 gets us to the 1.618. And what's nice about that is as as price moves into the swing point from January 17th, if it's moving in there with more than 18 million shares, odds favor that we might get to that 2174 level out there. From a profile standpoint, the next level of resistance is going to be at 2379. That would be the bottom of its uh, monthly profile. But because it is a bearish structured profile, more likely than not, where price would really target would be the center level. And that's at about 2565. So that's kind of the big picture for Barrick Gold out there. And it's being confirmed by the GDX and pretty much uh, many of the instruments. Hey, Brett, we're, I just noticed the clock. We're about to go to a break. So I didn't give you a chance to speak. <laughs> so do me a favor, if you would, hold on. We'll come back. We'll take a look at uh, Barrick Gold, uh, answer any questions you have about it or anything else. This is Steve Rhodes with Brent in Martinez, California. We'll be back in about four minutes. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. 
an amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Barrett Gold with Brent in Martinez, California. I did open up the daily uh, white background chart for us, Brent, and the next level of resistance or the price target is at 2099. That's a TD9 count breakdown area. So a close above that uh, would be a uh, another bullish outcome. So what questions uh, can I answer for your information that I can provide to you for Barrett Gold that we haven't already discussed? I just know for me when I saw this stock, because I was already in AU and GFI, and those had made real nice runs, and this one was still like down. I mean, you look at the charts, they weren't anything like each other. And, and here, this is probably, I'm pretty sure it's the second biggest gold, you know, yes. <laughs> miner out no, there. No, yes, you know, behind, it was lagging. Behind for sure. Newmont. Yeah. And they had bought, you know, uh, Wrangell Resources. Just so everything seemed about it seemed like it was a good place to be trying to buy it. And, I did that at the lows, and, and I mean, that's kind of taken off. But I guess the one thing I would ask of you is if we do have some kind of a pause, what levels back the other way would be support, you know, just to be watching. So, so because we're above profile levels, the only thing that I would have is where we started the day off, which is about 1877. So I, I don't see that taking place. Uh, on the daily chart. So the what we'd really have to do, Brent, is probably go to some short-term time frame charts. So for example, there's a 30-minute chart and you could get a TD9 count that would complete. So you're in bar eight right now. So that'd take us to 130. So by 230, 
if price is able to overcome the current high, which is bar number seven at 2019, then we would have a valid TD9 count that, that could or should form for the 30 minute time frame. And there we could see a pullback to, to its oscillator and change line, which right now is printed about 1959. So I think 1959 is more realistic than pulling back to 1877 out there. But that's what I would be doing is looking at the short term time frame charts. The only one with a topping signal is the 30 minute. So that's what I would be you know, focused on out there on some type of retracement. That's fantastic, Steve. I appreciate it so much. That's really what I was looking for. I Perfect. figured there'd be something, yeah, maybe not way down what you're talking about, but somewhere along the way, you know, that, that might, you know, potentially go back to, who knows if it's even going to do that, but I'll be watching exactly. that as well. So yeah, yeah, thanks exactly. so much. Just have yourself a wonderful day and, and uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thanks for calling. That was Brent in Martinez, California. And uh, now we're going to go out to Sarasota and speak with Ray. Ray, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Excellent. Thanks, thanks for taking my call. Sure. You want to take like a Kinder Morgan, I believe? Yep. I've got two stocks, Kinder Morgan, and the other one is Vermilion uh, Energy. BET. Okay. So let's start with Kinder Morgan. Uh, tell the folks what you're doing, how I can best help you. Uh, I've got uh, a core position now in Kinder Morgan, which I've had for some time, and uh, I'm just uh, really interested in knowing where it's going from here. I've sold uh, call options against part of the position, and uh, I'm, I'm looking to maybe buy some shares to trade. Okay. So uh, first, if I take a look at, Ray, just the profile levels, right now, prices dip back inside its daily profile, the top of which is 1770. So if price does close below 1770 today, it would suggest you could see a pullback to 1712 or 1655. Those would be the two numbers that I would be focused on there. Now, price is above the weekly profile, above the monthly profile out there. So what we really want to do here is go to my daily time frame chart and see if there's any other kind of signal information for us. Uh, it has this formed any kind of a top or where are we at? So yesterday was bar number eight of a TD9 count. But in order to get an actual TD9 count, price would have to close today above 1765 or at 1750. So it looks to me like uh, that TD9 count may not come to fruition. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we don't pull back. What I do see out here, Ray, in the daily time frame is it's oscillator and change line about uh, six, seven, eight, nine trading sessions ago, a uh, change colors went from red to green. And when that happens, that typically tells us that we will see price net line catch up to each other. So that's at 1727. So the levels to be watching on a retracement now are going to be 1655, 1713, and about 1727. As price pulls back a little bit that number could change by a penny or two but that's what i'd be looking at on the daily time frame for kinder morgan real quickly let me just go to the weekly chart the weekly chart shows that resistance was at 1798 and that looks like the high of this week so far has been 1798 how about that so 1798 happens to represent so i, I like the idea you, you've got a core position this has a nice td9 count bottom for its weekly time frame i believe there's an actual island bottom on the daily time frame chart as well so you've got two real nice signals but uh whether you knew it or not uh, price ran up to that resistance level of 1798 and that says that price here on the weekly basis could pull back to about the 1680 level so i know i've given you a, a couple of different <coughs> numbers out there the question is which one <coughs> you know is the correct one and i wish i had the answer to that i don't we'd really have to take a look at what's as price would be pulling back in that area we'd have to go take a look at what's going on on a short-term time frame chart like a 30 or a 65 minute but for the most part i would expect you would see this pull back to between 1680 1655 1713 and around 1727 does that help you out or does that confuse the heck out of you no, no, that, that's that's very helpful. I, you know, another reason I like the stock is because it yields over six percent, and it's got a, a really solid uh, cash flow. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a stock I've been familiar with for some time. That's well, it looks it looks, it looks it looks good, and and congratulations on uh, on staying with it and, and and sticking with it. And so, it look, looks looks really good to me, at least at this stage of the uh, game out there. Good. You know, the other stock is BET. It doesn't pay a dividend, but it's got a, a really, really strong earnings and a, and a very low PE, and it's it's kind of been on a on a real good move this year. Yeah. So, so if we take insight a insight as to where that might be heading, 
I, yeah, so, my core position, I've already sold uh, uh, options, uh, uh, call options against my position, but I am uh, thinking about picking up uh, more shares on a pullback. So you've got a, uh, I'm going to take a look at the large eight. So this also has an island bottom. So both VET and Kinder Morgan had nice island bottom patterns out there. Wish I'd seen those when they had formed. But that's what I'm going to use as my A point out here, Ray, which is the low from the trading session of uh, November 26th. And for the B point, I'll come all the way up here to the high on December 28th. And then the retracement down into support, the uh, center of its uh, bullish structured profile on December 31st. So the one, and this is uh, the B point was passed with volume. Prices is trading along the left side of that C to D leg. So price should be able to make its way to 1757 to 1899. Those would be the next okay. uh, price target areas. Uh, but before that happens, it looks like this will confirm a TD9 count top today. Bar number nine should form. Price is trading at 1561. And as long as price closes above 1492, you'll get bar number nine today. Now, this may be just a very slight pullback. It's a strong momentum stock at this stage here. And so that pullback, Ray, may just take you to 1506. But the daily is going to form a topping signal. If price were to get below 1506, yeah, that could open up the door for 1314 as an example. So I think you'd want to, you know, just watch that level out there. I don't have any kind of a topping signal on the weekly time frame other than price at 1638 gets right into the resistance here. That's a TD9 count breakdown resistance. So do me a favor, if you would, Ray. We're about to head to a, a break here, and I want to be able to answer your questions. Uh, so hold on through the break. We'll come back, and that's what we'll do with Ray in Sarasota. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even 
can give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Ray in Sarasota. We're taking a look at ticker symbol VET. Hey, by the way, Ray, uh, uh, one of our dinners, uh, you probably know this, but uh, they, they release their earnings uh, after the bell this evening. Kinder Morgan, that is. But like Kinder Morgan, it ran into resistance uh, at the uh, TD9 count breakdown resistance level on its weekly time frame. That, in essence, is where price is trading into right now for VET. At 1638 is the number, and the actual high for the day is 1627. So it's running into a resistance level. Uh, so I shared with you a bunch of information. What questions did that pose for you that I can try to help answer? Well, what, what's helpful is uh, giving me an idea of where the, the pullback will be because I'm, I'm looking to uh, add to my position. And uh, uh, $15, uh, $15 was the last time I, I bought any shares at all. Okay. And I'm, I'm hoping it gets back down there so I can add to the position. Okay. Yeah. I mean, at this stage here, that's what I would be looking for. Now, the other thing I would do is just look for, for some short-term time frame and see if there's some kind of bottoming signal as price pulls back to that level, should it pull back to that 1506 area. But that's what it says for us right now as we take a look at the uh, charts out here. Okay? Excellent. Excellent. Big, big help. Thank you very much, Steve. My pleasure as always. Thanks so much for calling. Thanks for listening to the show. That was Ray in Sarasota. So we've got about uh, five questions that have come in. So let's get to those because uh, I don't want to fall too far behind on that. This one coming in from David in Tom Ball, Texas. He wants to take a look at Schlumberger. And uh, so let's do that out here. He also wanted to look at the crude oil contract. I'm just going to switch over to this chart right here and just simply expand this out. And there's an A to B equals CD and light side of light sweet crude. It's already made the one to two level. But yesterday was the TD9 count top. And it depends on whether or not price trades or closes above yesterday's side, which is 86.63. Right now, we're at 86.58. So watch the 86.63 level. If price closes below that, then a TD9 count top has held, and we may see a retracement or a pullback inside of light sweet crude. So I'll just share that with you. You wanted to take a look at SLB. I'm just going to go to my white background charts here and get its signals. That way I can try to expedite things a little bit. I don't see any kind of a – oh, this is the weekly chart. Let's just start with the daily first out here. So we take a look at the daily chart for SLB. Interesting. So this looks just like the last two stocks that we looked at. You've got, however, in this case, you've got a TD9 count that should complete today. It will complete today, David, as long as price closes above 36.45, near 37.24 right now. So this would suggest to me that price will make its way back to its oscillator and change line. That's at 35.70. If price did, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it spike if, in fact, this occurs, to see it spike 35.12. Because this is a bearish structure daily profile. Price closed above it yesterday and the day before. So if it's just a counter trend move to the downside, then 35.12 should be where you would see a um, where you should see this bottom. If price closed below 35.12, then that's not the case, and you see would see pull price pull back to about 33.13. The weekly time frame chart does not have a bottom, but price is approaching its breakdown level of 39.97. So that kind of supports what we looked at on the daily time frame. The monthly time frame and price is dealing with trying to take out its TD9 count top. Now, on a monthly basis, in order to do that, you need to see it close above 36.87. We're at 37.28 right now, but no idea what it's going to be at the end of the month. So right now, Slumberjay looks like it's getting ready to form a TD9 count top. Uh, the next level, the, the the first level of support would really be about that 35.70 level. So, David, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in, and have a, a wonderful Wednesday. The next question coming in from David J. And David says, could you please take a look at the at TGB as a short-term trade? Love your show, and I'm a fan. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So let's go take a look at Taseko Mines out here. Let me get to the three time frame charts out here, TGB. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is, oh, actually, I do have it started on the white background. Okay. So let me, let me just go to this. It'll be a little bit more efficient uh, for all of us, I hope. And uh, with regard to... 
TGB. So what is this doing? It's really consolidating with inside its daily profile. And that's between the range of 201 or thereabouts and 215 or thereabouts. So I just see a sideways consolidation uh, inside of TGB on a daily time frame. The weekly chart for us tells us what? Weekly chart tells us that price right now on a weekly basis is taking on that green oscillator and change line. We're at 212, and this is about what looks like 211 or maybe 210. Uh, 211 is the number. So we're over it by one penny. I would say that, David, if price closes above 210 on a weekly basis, you should see 220 out there. That's the uh, top of the bearish structured weekly profile. Now, it would be a positive if you can get price to close above 220, but that's going to be a resistance. So we're at 220 with resistance on the weekly. The daily says 215, the consolidation out there. And on a monthly basis, it doesn't look that bad. You've got resistance. In fact, it looks pretty good. You had a uh, pullback. Price pulled back to that green oscillator and change line. It has held that level. So 233 or 238 really is its resistance point out there. So with regard to Slumber J, I'm sorry, not Slumber J, but TC, TGB out here, you really just at this stage here, I'd say you've got the consolidation pattern inside that daily time frame. So, David, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks again for being a uh, listener to the Trader's Ed Show. The next question coming in from Eddie in Boca Raton. And Eddie says, can you do your deep dive on the indices? Uh, yeah, I will do that, Eddie. Um, if you have any time, can you look at NVIDIA and Apple? Let's go take a look at Apple. So Apple at this stage here has held support. And support being the uh, bottom of a profile. Uh, I take that back. I, it's, the, it's not the bottom of a profile. It's the prior swing point. Really, Apple is testing two swing points. The swing point from January 10th, that did $106 million, you're only at $53 million. So if price closes above $168.17 today, Eddie, you'll have a rejection of that swing point. Price also tested the swing point low from December 20th, 107 million shares. You are going to, and that low out there was uh, 167.46. Today's low has been 167.32. So you would have a rejection of two swing points on lighter volume. Now, ideally, Eddie, is price would get back inside the daily profile. It doesn't have to do that today. That would just be the better option. That's at 169.65. But you get a rejection of a swing point. You can't bust them to the downside. Price should bust them to the upside. That could take us all the way to 181.46. We'll take this one step at a time, one day at a time. You might ask yourself, hey, Steve, well, wait a minute here. You're looking at a bullish structured profile. Price is trading below that. Usually you say a counter trend move would end at 172.60. The center well, that's true, but you need to get two consecutive closes below this 169.65. So if it does close below that today and does so tomorrow, then you're exactly right. 172.60 would be the extent of the move out there. So I'm going to go on to the other questions just to get through those. And then, assuming that we have time, which I believe we will, I'll go do a, a deep dive through the uh, equity futures charts for you and, and really everybody else inside the Tiger's Den. The next question comes in from uh, Hector and Patty. Hey, Hector, how are you doing? Happy Wally Wednesday to you. You. So you want to take a look at American Tower Corp. And uh, it's on an ABC down. Is it showing signs of a bottom uh, just yet? So let's do this here. I'm just going to look at the daily time frame for it uh, because that's where we would want to see the uh, bottom. So right now, now I've got, I'm firing that up on my other screen out here. So right now, what do we know? We know there's an A to B equal. Uh, that's the wrong A to B equal CD since the last time that we were out here drawing that in. So the A to B equal CD on the weekly chart would look like this now. And uh, this would show that the one-to-one -one level would take us to 244.08. Not down there just yet, but yesterday was close enough, or last week I should say was close enough, as price got down to a low of 246.09. Uh, we're going to a break here. Uh, so uh, that's going to, you're asking, is there any sign of a bottom? And that's what we're going to go answer for you as soon as we get back, Eddie. I'm sorry, Hector. Hector and Patty. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So we're looking at AMT, American Tower Corp, for Hector and uh, Patty. And uh, Hector's specific question is just wondering, is there any sign of a uh, buy the D point? And uh, so you've got the A to B. I've got both the A to B equals CD pattern and the daily and the weekly time frame out here. And what you would need for that, Hector, is you would need some type of bullish reversal candle. And we don't have that as we speak at the uh, moment. So to, and to specifically answer your question, do we have on AMT a buy the D point pattern? The answer is no. Now. Here's the danger about the A to B equals CD pattern, both for the daily and the weekly. Remember, we were talking about A to B equals CD patterns with Brent, I believe, earlier. The way you come off that C point is really important. Well, if you just take a look at the weekly, say a significant move lower. We're on the inside left now on the A to B equals CD to the downside. And um, this, this suggests that this could be an expansion of an A to B equals CD to the downside. With a likely price target in the 229 to 239 level, that's the bullish structured monthly profile level. Now, there is a, uh, we should see a bounce out here. So uh, as I say that, it looks like it wants to head lower out here. Uh, it does have a TD9 count bottom that formed two days ago. And as long as that level holds, what this would suggest is we could see a bounce up to the 260, 53-ish type area. That's the bottom of the daily profile. That's where its oscillator and change line is hanging out. Um, so that's what it looks like. Uh, that would be negated if you saw a close below 246.09. So, um, and if I go to a 30-minute time frame chart, oh, that's right, I put this on a different panel as well, just so, so I could specifically do that for us it's on a 30 minute time frame you've got a rosemontum indicator signal this would suggest to me 
Hector, uh, that if price can close above 251.63, then you should see move to 256.41 or maybe 259. So if you do see that, you know, I, I want you to keep that into context, so to speak, of what's going on on the weekly and the daily time frame out there. So I'd just be cautious with regard to American Tower. Ticker symbol there is AMT. The uh, last question that has come in before we get to Eddie's uh, dive into the equity futures contracts come from Jim P. Uh, and, uh, oh, it's Carlos, okay. So did we reject the January 10th swing low on lighter volume on the NQ? You know, to answer that question so everybody can else, everybody else can do this, I'm just going to look to the QQQ series ETF, Carlos. And the answer there is, as of 144 in the afternoon, the answer is yes. The swing point that we're looking at, January 10th out there, in the Qs, had volume of 91 million shares. 369.31 was that low. You've tested that today. You've so far done 51 million shares. It looks like you're going to be light in the loafers and as long as light on volume, and as long as price is able to close above 369.31, you have a test and rejection of a swing point. Now, let's also take a look at the QQEW. QQEW. That's the equal weighted version of this. Ideally, you'd like to see that test a swing point, that same swing point. Okay, so here we've got it. So that is January 10th at volume of 116,000 shares. Yesterday was a test and rejection of 49,000 shares. Today you're at 59,000, but as long as price here closes above 109.86, the equal weight will then suggest that you have a bottom. But where does that bottom take us? I would be watching the QQEW on any move higher. This would be day number two below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. And I would say if this is just a counter trend move, and that's how we'd have to term it at this stage of the game, price would find resistance at about 112.68. That's looking at the QQEW. Uh, oftentimes we don't look at it, but really in times like this, we really need to. So as I take a look, let's, uh, that's the old Qs. Let's take a look at QQQ out here. And uh, see what its pattern looks like. And so it, too, has a bearish structure daily profile. So there you'd be looking for a counter trend rally to end at about 379.20. So, yes, uh, Carlos, the answer is do we have a, a, a test of the swing point on lighter volume? We do. The question is where does price close? And as long as price closes above those swing points, then you've got what I believe it is you are looking for. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, another email from you in the future. So now let's Let's get to Eddie's request out here. And uh, since we were just on the cues, let's go continue to stay with those. Let's go take a look at the NQ. We're going to take a look at our eight panel market, our eight panel chart out here. So if you would be kind enough, just give me a moment. I've got a little housekeeping, got to change screens, get over there. We should be here momentarily. Boom, voila, there you go. So in the case of the uh, daily time frame chart, what heck, I'm sorry, what um, Carlos was looking at was a swing point from October the 10th. Now, that was a hammer candle. And so if we were to see a close below that low, that is at 15,152, that would be uh, bad news bears out there. But as long as price holds and a key level of support has held, you're at 15,244 right now. So at this stage, you've you know, looks like it's going to hold. On a five-hour time frame chart, you have a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. On a four-hour chart, confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. A 120-minute chart, you've got a confirmed A to B equals C, a buy the D point pattern. On the 60-minute chart, confirmed roads momentum indicator signal. 30-minute chart, confirmed roads momentum indicator signal out here. So all the intraday charts, Carlos, even though this is what you were asking for, or Eddie, are generating signals, certainly that the market is attempting to form some kind of bottom out here. Now, what you'd really like to see for the NQ, the proof in the pudding, would be a close above 15,434, then 15,585. If you get those, then we typically see that counter trend rally, which in the case of the NQ, oddly enough, we took a look at um, the Qs and the QQEW. Well, in the center of their profiles is where that counter trend rally should end. Our oscillator and change line is at about the center of the NQ's daily profile, and that's in about the 15,717 area. So that's where we should see a bounce run into resistance out there. So Eddie, I hope that helps you out with regard to the NQs and what they're doing out here, as well as Carlos, who was taking a look at the NQ to see if there was a rejection of that uh, December, January 10th swing point, which at this stage of the game there is. So let's go from the NQ to the uh, Dow. As we take a look at the Dow charts out here, again, the same eight panel charts. If we go take a look at the 30-minute uh, chart, you can see a nice TD9 and Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom. On the 60-minute chart, TD9, Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom. The 120-minute chart out here, I don't know what we've got. 
I don't. Uh, maybe let me just take a quick peek. See, do we have a? Oops, sorry about that. Do we have a buy the D point? The answer is it looks like we do. The you might have a couple of them out here. So let's take a look at the long one. So the long one, I'm going to go just draw in the A to B, and then I'm just simply going to take this line and move this over here. So okay, perfect. So you, yeah, you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD on the 120 minute time frame chart. You have that same pattern on the 240. If you got it on the 120, you've got it on the 240 because that's got a bull uh, bull sash candle that took place at six o'clock this morning. And on the uh, five hour chart, you'd have the same pattern, but you don't have the bullish reversal candle just yet. But price is pulling back into support. 35101 should hold out here and that is the uh, five hour time frame chart for the uh, Dow. If we look at the daily time frame out here, the daily time frame, you know, is kind of in limbo. Uh, so I don't have a really great signal on the daily time frame for us out here, but the intraday charts are certainly giving the signals that it is trying to bottom, attempting to bottom. Let's go take a look at the ES mini now. Well, actually let's look at the Russell 2000 since that's closest to where I'm at on my uh, screens out here. So in the case of the Russell 2000, 30 minute, you've got, so in the Russell 2000, here's what I would suggest. I wouldn't consider taking a long trade or counter trend move until you saw some type of bullish reversal candle. You can see on the daily time frame, it has triggered that road's momentum indicator signal. Price is below a hammer candle that had formed on Friday out there. So that's why I say, even though the intraday charts out here do show bottoming potential, it's really the daily chart that I would wait on. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So unlike the Dow Equity Future contract that we looked at, the YM for its daily time frame, there was really no signal. There was kind of like in between, you know, support, resistance. Uh, but in the case of the ES Mini, price has pulled back to test that 45, 37, 50 level. And that is the uh, TD9 count breakout area. So now when we take a look at the 30-minute chart, you see the Rosemont indi indicator bottom. TD9 and Rosemont indicator bottom in the 60. That's lower left. Uh, I imagine you've got a buy the D point on the 120-minute uh, chart, much like we took a look at with the NQ. So yeah, that, that looks likely out here. So you've got a bottoming signal there. Uh, you've got a 240-minute roads to indicator bottom, as you do with the five-hour chart. So all the intraday charts here, when you pull back to a level of support, a breakout level is certainly one of those areas, 45, 37, 50. What you want to see is the intraday charts give you bottoming signals, right? I mean, if we just stop and we, we, we sit back just for a moment and we say, hey, on a daily basis, if we're going to see some turns in a market, where are we going to see those take place first? Voila, we get back to these intraday time periods out here, and they really help us to uh, to generate that, that information. So what it looks like to me, we've got a minute to go. We should see some kind of a bottom form. Uh, maybe it's already formed out here, and we should see some type of rally that takes us up to the oscillator and change line levels. In the case of the ES Mini, that's at 4690. At least that's what, how I'm interpreting what the charts are communicating to you and I out there. Uh, back to gold just for a moment here. Here I switched over to a different uh, uh, a chart or set of charts out here. This is how gold is performing today in all the major currencies. And what you can see is in terms of uh, euros and pounds, uh, price has broken through a descending trend line. So that's a positive. Uh, in the case of yen, needs to get up to about... Um, 21, 142 or so to break that trend line out here. I don't have a descending trend line in the case of U.S. dollars, but we know we have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. So, folks, uh, the show went quickly. Thanks so much for joining us today. Stay tuned. You've got two more great hours. Your favorite polar bear, David White, is up next with the Power Trading Hour. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home, and I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday, folks.